Hey, welcome back to The Dive. Today, we will talk about a variety of topics with our guests. He will dive into energy, Evergrande, central banking policy, inflation, beneficials trading the markets, gold, and Bitcoin. He is the founder and CEO of Bubba Trading. Todd Bubba Horowitz is joining us today. But before we bring him on, just a quick reminder to tap on that subscribe button for me, please. Hey, Bubba, welcome to The Dive. Cassandra, great to be back with you. Always a pleasure. Yeah, same to you. Okay, so let's start off by diving into energy. How are you playing energy names right now? Well, I don't think there's any other way to play energy right now than to be a buyer. I mean, this ridiculous energy policy that we have developed in the United States and have cut out all the fracking and shale producers, plus the fact that we won't deliver getting any more natural gas, you can see that there's a shortage globally. So these companies can only make a fortune. And of course, you've got a, an administration that has no clue on what they're doing. And of course, we're going into a very uh, potentially cold winter, which is going to create a shortage. And we've got the inventories, the lowest in decades. And to mention, we've got twice the population that we had decades ago. So it's a big problem. So energy is certainly a buy at this point. Mm -hmm. OK, so we've got a lot of topics to cover today. And Evergrande is one of them. Do you view Evergrande as a controlled explosion or a strong risk of contagion? Well, I think Evergrande, listen, I think Evergrande will do whatever the Chinese government wants it to do. I think this is more of an example, and this might have even been a, a, a created shortage and a created default just to, to, to do something to market. You know, the, the Chinese are very, you know, those companies are very suspect. Even Alibaba, look what happened to Alibaba. So you've got a very, you've got a real hard picture to understand any Chinese stock, whatever they tell you they're doing, the facts are really never that clear. So I can't really make any real statement other than I think it'll do what the Chinese government wants it to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, in regards to central banking policy, the U.S. 10-year yields rose above 160 basis points this week. Do you think the Fed will start to taper anytime soon? Uh, well, the Fed may be forced to taper because of the bond market. The bond vigilantes are, are pushing down the bond futures, which makes rates go higher on their own. Um, I mean, the Fed may not want to. And of course, this is, again, this is a we're at a very big spot here with the appointment, either the reappointment of Jerome Powell, or I would suspect it'll be Lyle Brainerd, who is as dovish as can be, because you can see that the administration wants more money. They want to create universal basic income. So the tapering, you know, every quarter point as of now is $75 billion a month of debt service. So it's hard for them to justify tapering into this administration, but the true market would say interest rates should be higher and they could be supported. So inflation talk appears to be more common these days, and we keep reading things that McDonald's, Amazon, and Walmart are offering higher wages as an incentive to get people to work. Last time you were on, you said inflation will prove to be not transitory. Why do you think the Fed is pushing this transitory talking point for so long? I mean, the, the Fed is doing what they typically do. They hide behind the glass shield until it's too late. And then they say, oh, well, we made a mistake. You know, when you're trying to work everything about an economy off of a model that is 100 years old, OK, and you're really clueless with no common sense, you end up with these types of things. I mean, inflation is not only is it not transitory, we are in the, in the midst of potentially hyperinflation or and stagflation at the same time because nobody wants to work. As you mentioned with the jobs, you know, people are, the dining rooms in most fast food places are closed. They can't get enough help. So this is going to get really nasty, especially for the farming community because their input costs are going bananas higher and they can't get the output to pay, get paid. Mm, what a mess. Okay, so what are your thoughts on various Fed officials trading the markets? Well, I mean, you know, listen, that's as, that's as dirty and as criminal as anybody else. I mean, why is the Fed different? Now, they make exceptions, I guess, but why is that any different than any other inside information or inside trading? You know, you get inside information, it's supposed to be public. It's not supposed to be inside. You're not supposed to act upon that information. And they are very privy because they know what they're going to do with rates or whatever, so they, like today, you know, the, the FOMC minutes come out, they already know what's going to be said. So they're going to make whatever they say 
And that's the problem. You can have a tremendous edge when you when somebody knows what's going to be said to a government. Okay, so let's move on to gold. You recently wrote about gold manipulation theorists and how there isn't a conspiracy to pull it lower. How are you reading the gold chart here? Well, gold is now spiking and it looks like, you know, we're in full disclosure. I have a short position as a trader, but I'm always a buyer of physical. But, you know, gold is popping through now. And again, the manipulation theories are, are just silly because just think of it this way. There has to be a buyer and a seller have to meet to make what they call price discovery. Without it, there is no market. So if they're trying to manipulate the prices lower, the buyers can walk away and they can push gold down to a thousand. There has to be a two-sided market, manipulated or not. Is there extra weight on gold? Sure there is, because the central banks don't want it to explode. But in the meantime, there's always buyers that will step in and markets will go where they're going to go eventually. And we will see an appreciation of gold over time. And, you know, this is this is a lot deeper story when you come into the metals because you get into what the central banks are actually holding. And plus, when you're talking about manipulation, it may be the JP Morgan thing was on trading manipulation, not on long-term holding manipulation. So again, manipulated or not, it still takes price discovery to make a market work. So Jamie Dimon said this week that Bitcoin is worthless, but JP Morgan intends to offer Bitcoin-related services to their clients. Do you think Bitcoin is a little overheated here? How do you read Bitcoin's price chart? Well, I think Bitcoin's going to new highs. I think Bitcoin's probably going to go to, probably at some point will go to 100,000. And again, I'm not going to make that prediction today that it's going there, but I'm sure it'll make new highs. You know, this whole bashing of Bitcoin, this whole trying to destroy Bitcoin is really be from the governments globally. They don't want it because right now the fiat currency system is manipulated. And when, when, when you when can manipulate it, you can basically offer secondary on people's cash in their own pocket and make it worth less. In the Bitcoin or the cryptocurrency world, you have a true free market that trades 24 hours a day, seven days a week with no, you cannot create more supply than there is. And Jamie Dimon has been investing in it. I don't care what he says. He's full of crap when he starts with these, these statements because they're, they're offering it in their bank. And we originally said, Anybody who talks about Bitcoin will be fired. Well, guess what? They're now making money off of it. And I would bet that they have some sort of position, maybe not in the fizzled crypto, but in stocks that are involved in it. Interesting. OK, so one more thing before we let you go here, Bubba. For our audience wants, who wants to learn more about your commentary, where can they go? They can go to BubbaTrading.com. It is posted every day. OK, they can email me direct at Bubba, Bubba Trading and, com and come to my Monday night webinar where I do with my partner. And we bash back and forth for a couple hours about all these topics all the time. So awesome. Either way, it's been love to have everybody come. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us again today, Bubba. It's always a pleasure. Thanks, Cassandra. You're the best. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll be back again tomorrow with more great content. So be sure to stay tuned by hitting that notification bell.